Hello, this is video number 16 and it's about validity in psychological research. Validity is about whether an observed effect in an experiment or an investigation is a genuine effect or not. So, for example, supposing I did a little experiment and I discovered that psychology students are better at maths than history students. Okay, is that valid? Is it a true thing? Are psychology students really better at maths than history students or did these psychology students just do better on their maths test on this particular day or not? Um, is the effect that we have observed a true psychological effect or process um, and can it be generalised to other schools, other countries, other situations and so on? Validity is the question of whether an observed effect is genuine or not. Okay, first, to understand uh, validity, we need to understand reliability because a test or a measure can only be valid if it is reliable. So have a look at the, the, the bullseye in the middle. This is reliable and valid, getting the same correct answer every time. And obviously, this is the most desirable case. On the left, we have a test which is reliable but not valid. It's getting the same incorrect answer every time. So high reliability is not a guarantee of validity. And on the right we have the case where it's neither reliable nor valid and it can't be valid because it's not reliable. If it's not giving the same answer every time then it can't be a valid test. If it's not reliable then it can't be valid. Okay, there are two types of validity that we need to know about, external validity and internal validity. Internal validity first. Internal validity is about what goes on in the room, what goes on inside the investigation that determines whether the effect is genuine or not. So, for example, in an experiment, does the IV actually influence the DV? Or is the relationship between them polluted by extraneous and confounding variables? If we can reduce and eliminate confounding and extraneous variables, then that increases the internal validity of an experiment. Are there demand characteristics? Is social desirability bias at play? And if these things are there, then they're going to reduce the internal validity of the investigation. Are there in um, investigator effects? Maybe we are consciously or unconsciously influencing the behaviour of our research participants in some way. And if we are, that's going to reduce internal validity. Is the observation or the test that we're doing a true and valid measure of what we're actually trying to discover? So, for example, if we're trying to test people's cognitive ability, I mean, basically to find out if they're clever or not, is an IQ test a valid measure of cognitive ability? Or are there some people who are actually really clever but just score badly on IQ tests? If that's true, then an IQ test is not a valid measure of cognitive ability and it has low internal validity. Mundane realism is another factor which affects internal validity and this is whether or not the situation or the task is true and similar to something that someone would do in their everyday lives. So those are the factors affecting internal validity. And in a moment we're going to have a look at external validity, but first it's time for this week's random psychology fact. This week's random psychology fact is the person you think of before you sleep is the person that caused them happiness or pain. Well, that was this week's random psychology fact. All right, external validity. External validity is about what goes on outside the room, what goes on outside the investigation, external factors that affect the validity. So. The one that's very often talked about is ecological validity, which is about generalizability to other settings. But it's not just about the environment in which the investigation takes place.
So, for example, memory research is often said to have very low ecological validity because you do an experiment in a laboratory where you have to remember a list of trigrams. Now, you could improve the ecological validity of that investigation by taking it into a supermarket, which is a natural environment where you do have to remember things. But if you then gave people a test of their memory for trigrams in a supermarket, it would still have low ecological validity. You've changed the environment, but not the task. And truly, to have really high ecological validity and generalizability, you'd have to get them to remember you know, the ingredients they needed for, for supper that evening. Population validity is another form of external validity. So, for example, in my experiment, where I found out that psychology students are better at maths than history students, Okay, that might have been true for the people in my experiment, but would it also be true for uh, students in Scotland, or Wales, or, or, or America, or Nicaragua, or wherever? Is my sample representative of the wider population or not? That's a question of population validity, which is a form of external validity. And finally, we have temporal validity. Maybe a psychological phenomenon was valid at a certain point in the past but no longer is true. For example, the ash experiment. Maybe in the mid 20th century people were just much more conforming to normative social influence that they are, than they are now and maybe in the 21st century people are much more independently minded and if that's true then that study of conformity would have low temporal validity. Okay, how do we assess validity? Well, the first way of doing so is frankly a little bit unscientific and that's called face validity. And face validity is simply an intuitive assessment of whether a test or an investigation looks and feels right. Are the measures in the test or the observation do they seem to assess what the test sets out to assess or not? In other words, Ainsworth's strange situation has high face validity. Why is that? It's because when we look at the infant interacting with its mother and we measure its separation anxiety and its willingness to explore, etc., then we think that those observational behavioural categories do reflect the child's relationship with the mother. It looks and it feels intuitively right that that's correct. So that's face validity, and I did say it was a bit unscientific. The other way of assessing validity is concurrent validity. And this is whether the scores or the outcomes on a test or a measure are similar to scores and outcomes on a previously validated test or measure. So, for example, if I've got uh, an IQ test and I give that to a number of people and some of them score high and some of them score low, what I can do is give the same people a previously validated IQ test. And if the scores on the two tests are strongly positively correlated, then I can conclude that my current test has high concurrent validity. Okay, how can we improve validity? Well, in, a, in an experiment, there's lots of opportunities to improve validity that we know about already. So, for example, having controls, having standardised procedures, using a single or a double blind procedure, uh, using deception to conceal from our research participants the aims of the investigation, and this might reduce demand characteristics. Perhaps we'd use covert observation, and that might reduce not only demand characteristics, but also social desirability bias. All of these measures increase the internal validity of an investigation. Of course, the problem is that these measures which increase the internal validity of an investigation can also decrease the ecological validity and the external validity of the investigation. So you can't have it both ways. How about questionnaires? How can we check and improve the validity of a questionnaire? This is done with something called a lie scale. So 
in our questionnaire, we put some items, some at the beginning and some at the end, which basically ask the same question in different ways. So one question might be, for example, yes or no, I never regret my actions. And then later on in the questionnaire, we have another question which says, yes or no, I sometimes feel bad about things that I've done. And if people answer those two items in a consistent way, then that will make us think that this is a valid questionnaire. And if they answer them inconsistently, then that tells us that the questionnaire is perhaps not valid and we need to look at it again. How about qualitative research? Uh, for example, uh, case studies and interviews. Well, for these, we can check the interpretive validity of the case study or the interview. And what we do here is basically just ask the research participants whether they agree with our interpretation of the outcome or the results of the investigation. And if they agree with us, if they reach the same conclusions of us, if they, if they agree with our conclusions, then we can say that this case study, that this interview has high interpretative validity.